Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Trilly here, back with more Pico CTF challenges. Unsurprisingly, I'm still in the general skill section of Pico CTF 2023. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Pico CTF is a great resource for anyone interested in getting into cybersecurity or capture the flag events. It's completely free, it's online, it's hosted by uh, Carnegie Mellon University, and they have all their past challenges linked here. I'm just going to focus on the most recent one, Picos 2023, and then the general skills. And then eventually we can get into the reverse engineering, exploit, uh, binary exploitation, forensics, etc. But let's just keep going with the general skills because these are cool. Um, I, I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are too. So let's click on the repetitions challenge, see what that has in store for us. So can you make sense of this file? Then it gives us a link to the file to download. So we also have a hint if we want. And these tags here are, are neat. They also give hints. We see base 64, which is an encoding scheme. It's not encryption because encryption, it can be difficult to decrypt, but if you encode something, it's meant to be decoded pretty easily. And I guess we'll see that here. So if we click on the hint, multiple decoding is always good. So right click, copy the link, and let's go over to our directory. I never cleaned up from the last video, so forgive me. Let's close out of this. Let's uh, make a directory, make der repetitions, and then CD into that directory. LS L, there's nothing here. Let's download our file with wget. Nice, so that's there. I can run the file command on it. And it tells us it's ASCII text, which is just human readable numbers and letters. So let's cat that out. Oh, it's it's just a bunch of text, right? But it's not anything we can make sense of, right? This isn't human language, but this is something a computer can understand. So we saw earlier that I talked about base 64. So if we're not sure what that is, we can look at the man page for that because base64 is installed by default on most Linux operating systems. So base64 encode or decode data and print it to standard input. So the synopsis, the options it takes. So you run the name of the command, you can give it some optional syntax some optional um, flags, and then the name of the file. So base64 encode or decode file or standard input to standard output. So your terminal screen. And then we want to decode it, right? So we use a TAC D for TAC decode. And then the few other options, ignore garbage, are wrapped on columns. We're not going to worry about that. So let's do that. Let's do base64 decode, and then the name of our file, encrypted flag. Hit enter. And we, we just get more base64, right? If we scroll up, it looks similar. But you can tell it is different from this original one. It starts with VMP, and then after we decoded it, it's VJ. So what's going on here? Why didn't this print out our flag? Well, if we reference the hint, it says multiple decoding is always good. So this was probably encoded multiple times. So if I hit the up arrow and just pipe this into another base64 decode, all right, it prints it out again. You see that it changed, it has gotten smaller. Let's just keep doing that. Let's just keep piping that output into more base64 to code. Oh, I forgot the tag D switch. So you can see it just reverted back to the previous stage. Clear the screen real quick, do it again. Okay, are you having fun yet, guys? Let's keep going. Maybe one more. We see it's getting smaller and smaller every time. So I'm assuming we're just going to keep getting closer to that flag. And there you have it. So we could probably create a script instead of just chaining this. Because if I try to base64 to code this, um, the actual flag, I'm going to get an error, invalid input. So you could probably make some type of for loop or some type of script where as long as the base64 decode works, as long as it doesn't return some type of error, right? We see this gives us an error, but if I try to base64 decode this right here, base64 decode, slam that in, 
and then I do echo dollar sign question mark, I get zero. That means success. So you could probably make some type of script as long as the error um, does not equal zero or does not equal one, however you want to phrase it, keep decoding it. So you could probably whip that up in Bash or Python pretty easily. I don't know if I'll do that for this. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. But there you have it. There's the flag. So we can just grab it, slam it in here, submit. Hey, what's up everyone? So I was curious about if I could chain those pipes together into some type of script. I'm no means an expert bash or Python scripter, but this is what I threw together and it does work even though it is kind of crude. So this is my file. I named it solve.sh. Line one denotes that I'm using the bash interpreter. I create a variable called file. That is just the file that we downloaded, encrypted flag. A result is the initial base64 decoding of that file, and I save it into result. And I have this while loop. It doesn't really work the way I want. I wanted to iterate, and then as long as um, the, the as long as these commands return error code zero, meaning success, as long as these commands are successful. Uh, keep doing something. So keep doing this. This is the main meat and potatoes, the main crux of the script. Echo the result. So echo that initial base64 decoding. I, I use said because this initial file, if I can open it up, you see here that when we base64 decode it, it has these new lines. And then when you save that into this environment variable, uh, I think I have it here. So if I just grab this, if I do result equals base64 to code hurt flag, oh, let me wrap that up. Now I echo out result. You see how this has spaces in it, right? There's spaces where those new lines were. That's not going to work. And it errors out. So I use said the stream editor to replace all those spaces with nothing. So now it's all one base64 encoded string. And then I pipe that into base64 to code. So just keep doing that in a loop over and over, just like we showed earlier. And then once it gets to that final Pico CTF flag, it's gonna break. And it gives us error code one, which exits the script completely. Um, it doesn't exit gracefully. This um, condition I don't think ever gets met. So I'm not a great scripter by any means. If you guys have any insight, any tips, I'd love to know. So I'm just gonna save this and come down here and run it. And it does print out result and it grips just for Pico. So I do get my flag, but I also get this error code. So if I can have it somehow uh, gracefully stop once the base64 to code string no longer works and just print out the flag without giving me this type of error, that'd be super awesome. So I've been tinkering around with this for a while. Um, I've been using Python a lot. So going back to bash in my brain kind of messed me up. But yeah, any scripters, any programmers in the comments who can improve on this makes a much better, much more useful script. I'd love to know. So there you have it. That's it for this video on repetitions. As always, take it easy. Let me know how you guys solved it down below and have a good one.